The first thing we have to do is calculate the mean of each of the columns. Each of the columns reflects the uh, five hypothetical lumen conditions that are being used in this homework assignment. To calculate the mean, of which I have a shortened set of data here for simplicity, you simply have to go to the cell at the bottom of a column and stick in the average function that you used in a previous assignment. So equals average left parentheses and then select all the data along that column. Finish with a right parentheses, hit enter, and your mean will show up. I'll do that again one more time. So then we have equals average left parentheses. Scroll down, finish with a right parentheses, and hit enter. It might be somewhat laborious to have to do this for each column, but there is a shortcut. Having gotten the mean at the bottom of this column, you can simply use Control C to copy it, and then holding down Shift and using the right arrow, you can drag across to the right, and then use Control R to move the equation across to each of the following right columns. Now these means have to be placed into this box. Now it is easy enough to look at the values and just copy them over. However, there is a more efficient way to do so. If you select each of these values and copy them, you'll have an option of different types of uh, pasting. If, let's say we're going to place the uh, scores here using a right-clicking method, there is an option for paste option with the one, two, three. What that means is to paste the numbers of the average, but not to use the equation that it comes from. If you do that, these values down here, which originally have an equation associated with it, as is shown here in the equation bar, have only turned into numbers. As you see here in the equation bar, there's nothing but a number. And if we take these numbers, now that they are in a text form, copy them, we can now make them into a column by placing it here, right-clicking again, and then using this paste option with the small arrow showing that things could be flipped from a row to a column or a column to a row. This is a transpose paste and hit enter. And then the numbers are automatically in the table where you need them to be. These values, which are just used as an intermediate step, can then be eliminated. The final part of this task is to generate a graph. Now to generate a graph in Excel is actually rather easy. All you have to do is select the group designations and the means that are going to be graphed. Come up to the insert function and under insert you'll have an option for charts. Now scatter plot, which is the one you want to use, is shown here as a scatter plot. You can see that visually and there are a variety of different scatter plots that you can use. You want to use the one here with no lines in it. Take those data and put it right down there and it automatically generates a graph with the data on it. This graph is going to have to have a label on the x-axis and a label on the y-axis. To be able to do so, if you come up to the top of the screen you'll see chart tools. And if you are in um, format or design as two options, for chart tools. Design will give you an option for add chart element all the way over here on the left hand side. And by clicking this down arrow, you can have a lot of different options for things you want to do to the chart. Here with axis titles, we want to label a primary horizontal axis. 
And when we select this, you'll see that the primary title shows up here. The homework assignment suggests that your x-axis be labeled brightness and lumens. There we go. Now we'll just go back up and do the same thing for an axis title but for the primary vertical. Now this gets a little funny because the word is written vertically and the suggested y-axis title in this case will be Subjective Estimate of Brightness. And then a chart title, which generally goes on any graph, just tells the relationship between the x and y axes. So in this case, uh, you can write any number of different things, but uh, this would be a perfectly reasonable title. Uh, relationship between lumens and perceived brightness. Now we're almost finished. The next thing we have to do is add a trend line. A trend line is a regression line that runs through the data. It's a statistical process that we're not actually doing by hand, but it will indicate the degree to which a mathematical equation will fit these data well. To place a trend line on there, you can come back up to the add chart element process and go to trend line, of which we are going to use a logarithmic uh, process. In this case, if you do use the add chart element, we'll try more trend line options. And over here on the right hand side of the screen, you'll find logarithmic. Now there are two additional boxes you need to check. One, display the equation on the chart you can see shows up here. This is the logarithmic equation that fits these data. And secondly, display R square value on the chart. The R square value is something we talked about in chapter one. It is the Pearson correlation coefficient indicating the degree of statistical relationship between the X and Y values. These values indicate the degree to which a logarithmic process, which would be fairly typical in a psychophysics experiment, uh, would be used to fit the data. These data are a little bit variable because I've chopped the data set down just for ease of use and showing how to make column means. We're not going to worry about that. These data are going to look uh, quite a bit different when you actually use the entire set of 500 data points that were sent to you in your homework. Uh, the graph can stay right where it is. Um, if you grab it along the top here, you can move it around if you wanted. Um, it doesn't really matter. One thing about this though is that uh, if you change any of the data points here that was used to originally create this graph, then the data will automatically change itself. But otherwise, this particular task is now complete.